Hey dude, I'm like really sorry. I stopped by to get myself something to eat. Are you already filming? Yeah, I have like an hour till my Manny Petty. I told you that. Uh, but it's I'm fine. Really sorry. Eat, eat. Okay. Okay. What did you get? I got some nuggets from Chick Fil A. Daniel, you can't eat that. Chick Fil A hates gains. What? Ah, uh, fine. It's not even a cheat day anyway. I got another snack. What are you eating, Daniel? Uh -huh. It's not even cooked. Oh. So? And it's Barilla! Daniel, do you hate yourself that much? What, are we are we boycotting them too? Yes! Ah, oh, fine. Since when? Since like a month or two ago. Uh, it's a liquid diet for me then. No! Bad game! Are you sick of boycotts? Are you tired of blogs and memes telling you what to buy and where to shop? Well, do we have an episode for you. I'm Daniel Villarreal from TollRoad.com. And I'm DR Hansen with Geeks Out. And welcome back to Joystick. Yeah, what are we talking about today, DR? Today we are tackling all things boycott. Boycott, okay. Um, and what exactly is a boycott? Well, a, a boycott, actually, the first boycott began in Ireland in 1880. Okay. Um, there was a farmer whose crop did very bad one year, and so he... He actually uh, made a deal with his sharecroppers. He said, uh, I'll deduct rent... I'll by 10%. And they were like, can we make it 25? I mean, it was a really shitty year. Yeah, but he decided not to do it, and what ended up happening? Well, uh, they, uh, the, the, the sharecroppers uh, started to boycott him. They wouldn't work, they wouldn't tend to the fields, and this boycott went so far into the community that the, the, the postman stopped delivering his mail to this guy. Yeah, the, the newspapers were reviling him, like people wouldn't buy his crops and his harvest anyway. And but and what was his name? His last name was actually Boycott. And so Ooh. by the middle of it, the, his name became synonymous with this sort of... Um, Organized isolation. Yeah, exactly. So God, thank God it wasn't like Vanderhoosen or, or, or like Beaverhausen. Or Felchenfuchen. <laughs> we have to Felchenfuchen story. <laughs> I wouldn't mind a good Felchenfuchen right now. Santorum Chick-fil-A. <laughs> So, so we basically boycott something when we uh, have some sort of moral disagreement with them. We think something they're doing is unjust or something like Correct, that. Correct, but it goes so far as to also include an economic aspect to the type of protest. It's not just saying we don't like what you do. It's, it's not giving our money to them or it's stopping their production of whatever they're producing. It okay. has some type of economic element to it. That's what a boycott is. And it also seems like there's kind of a PR aspect, like it's a lot of sure. bad press for the company being boycotted. Absolutely. Well. Like targeting their uh, their pocketbook and targeting uh, their image is uh, basically what a boycott is. Okay, so so who, who are we boycotting now? Uh, everything. I mean, the sun. I mean, I don't know. Do you have <laughs> these chairs? These chairs. Oh shit. Hello. Welcome to Joystick. <laughs> I think your head's cut off now. It's a nice crotch shot. Um, Are we boycotting crotches? No, so I think that uh, we're actually boycotting Chick-fil-A right now mm -hmm. uh, because Dan Cathy, the CEO, continues to make statements against uh, gay marriage and continues to give fund, fund anti-gay uh, organizations and initiatives in Africa and elsewhere. We're boycotting all of Russia. Uh, that's right, uh, because of their anti-gay uh, anti propaganda law up there and violence against uh, LGBT Russians is, is on the rise. And this boycott has gone so far as to boycotting the next Winter Olympics at Sochi, right. as well as Stoli Vodka. Right, right. Um, then they're also boycotting... Uh, Jelly... Jelly Belly Jelly right Belly. now. Uh, the president uh, or CEO of Jelly Belly gave some money to an initiative to fight transgender kids' rights in California. Ooh. We're boycotting Barilla Pasta because <laughs> the CEO, Guido Barilla, uh, Barilla, said that he's never going to present a gay family in any of his commercials. And if you don't like it, you homo, you can go and eat some other pasta. And we are. Yeah. Um, so we're basically boycotting pretty much everything. That's a lot, Daniel. How yeah. do we keep track of these boycotts? There are two ways you can keep track of it. Uh, first off, there's this really great app you can buy, or not buy, it's free, uh, called Bycot. What and do they do? What it is actually is whenever you go to the store, you can just use the app to scan the barcode of whatever you're buying, and it will tell you uh, what campaigns these, uh, these companies are for and against. So you can sign up for like a 
Save the Rainforest campaign, oh. uh, LGBT equality campaign, uh, pro union campaign, and and then you'll make sure that you're. And those are already pre-filled on the Bicot app, so you just choose. I want to do like animal rights. Right. Exactly. And then you know that everything you're buying is either for or against. You know, the, supporting those rights. That's a great way of boycotting, but also educating people on the uh, the products that are against what you believe in. Absolutely. And Maybe Pampers to... hates dogs, and you scan that barcode, and you find out that oh shit. Yeah. Uh, they kill animals. Pampers are really shitty. We don't know. They're unverified. Yeah, yeah unverified. Hashtag, Hashtag unverified. unverified. Um, but, you know, another way that you can uh, help educate yourself on what companies to support or not is to go with the HRC uh, Equality Buying Guide. Well, before you get your panties in your wad, I know there's a lot of heat against the HRC because of how they manage um, the company. And, and for good reason. But, yeah, I mean, the HRC hasn't always done a really good job keeping track of what companies uh, they give ratings to. For example, uh, Best Buy and Target, they gave a really high equality index rating to saying that they had progressive LGBT hiring practices and social practices. Uh, but then it was revealed, I think, during uh, one of the previous elections that they had actually given $150,000 to a uh, political action committee that had endorsed an anti-gay Republican candidate. And so there was a huge backlash against Target and against Best Buy. Are um, we boycotting them right now? Some people are still boycotting them right now, even though they have progressive practices. So it's a little bit difficult to kind of say, you know, who are boycotting and when a boycott ends and all that. Well, that brings it to a great question of when do you stop boycotting? Do we ever stop boycotting? I don't know. I, uh, I I think it's hard to draw the line of when you stop a boycott. Um, so, you know, when do you start a boycott? Well, you start a boycott when you feel that their uh, company is doing something that's a uh, moral wrong, you know, an injustice, them. right? Okay. And then, uh, you would typically stop a boycott when someone, when a company changes their behavior, maybe comes out with, you know, pro LGBT policies or stops, uh, funding, you know, anti-gay candidates or things like that. But the thing is, is it can sometimes be hard to draw that line. Uh, for example, uh, Chick-fil-A, they continue to keep giving to uh, anti-gay groups, even though they say they weren't going to. Um, that seems like a pretty easy boycott, though. I've stopped eating there, have you? Well, yeah, I, I don't eat there at all, um, even though their chicken biscuits are pretty oh good. But you can make your own damn chicken biscuits at home, okay, you lazy, hateful bastard. Um, the other thing is... Uh, with Barilla Pasta, so the Guido Barilla, uh, the, the president or CEO of the company, has apologized like three or four times over through video, and he actually instated an LGBT kind of equality group inside of the company to help be a bit more progressive about uh, these sorts of issues. Good for him. Yeah, but for a lot of people, they're kind of like, the damage is already done. You you said that gay people don't represent families in your mind and you're never going to have a gay commercial, so... But that doesn't mean stop, Guido. Keep doing what you're doing. I think it's great, and I think eventually we might come back, you know? Who knows? Especially if you do a commercial that has a gay family, oh, like, yeah. which is what kicked off this entire thing. So, that's a really good point. Yeah. That's a great... I think that would be the end to this boycott if they did that. There really would be, you know? Because so, we've educated Guido on the LGBT rights and in, in, in Italy and across the world mm -hmm. about uh, the, the discrimination against us. Exactly. And if he took that in and actually put them into their, that's a pretty distinct goal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But but not all boycotts have that goal. Um, in fact, it, it's, it's important for a successful boycott to really follow five different types of pillars in order to be a successful boycott. And having a clear goal is one of them. How about we go over those pillars right now? So as we begin to look at the five pillars of a successful boycott, we thought it would be good to highlight some successful boycotts in the past. Mm -hmm. And probably the most successful was the South African anti-apartheid movement. Right. You may remember that South Africa had a lot of racial segregation, discrimination there. Uh, blacks couldn't vote in elections. There were kind of separate but unequal facilities for blacks, uh, both in civil facilities and also like bathrooms. So a lot of uh, schools and countries started to boycott. South Africa. Yeah, they, they were, would stop sending visiting professors over there. They considered uh, South African academic institutions that were producing research and kind of agreeing with the regime uh, as kind of illegitimate and like there were a lot of uh, declamations of those institutions to kind of isolate them. They stopped purchasing uh, products and goods made in South Africa. Yeah, a lot of countries kind of did an embargo that way. Exactly. Um, there was also contention over the South African Olympics. Olympics. Uh, did you not participate in any of that? And, and it uh, took a long time. About 30 some 30 odd years. years. And then by the 1990s, early 90s, um, Nelson Mandela was released from prison. He was a big uh, advocate for the anti-apartheid movement. That's right. And then in 1994, South Africa finally had their first democratized elections where all the races could vote. And Mandela, of course, was elected president, effectively Yay. ending the apartheid movement. 
Uh, another good uh, example of a successful boycott, I believe, is the Skip Ender's Game boycott that we actually participated in last month. Yeah, if you look at the Skip Ender's Game a boycott, it actually has all five of the uh, successful pillars for a boycott. And we'll go over those five right now. The first is... There was a clear issue. Basically, this was a campaign against Orson Scott Card's hate speech. Mm -hmm. And so it was really easy for us to take the words that he'd said and said, hey, you know what? You don't want to fund this bigot. And people could understand that. People with gay friends, queer friends, they were like, wow, I really don't want to give money to this jerk. At the heart of this boycott was educating the masses on the man and his words. The man who created the story that has become this movie. We wanted to make sure people really knew what he stood for and what he has written and said in the past. Right. Uh, the second thing that the Skip Ender's Game boycott had was a visible target, and that was Orson Scott Card in the movie itself. And the movie itself. So the, the, the boycott was actually started uh, about a year before the movie even came out during its kind of summer promotions, and you had geeks out people, uh, you know, really putting the tax to Orson Scott Card, publishing articles, making sure that his homophobic words were out in front, and also asking both Harrison Ford and the director, uh, Gavin Hood, I think, uh -huh. uh, about, you know, his words and how it connects to the film. And so... Ender's Game almost became synonymous with Skip Ender's Game. Every time there was a, a publication or an article or an interview regarding Ender's Game, someone would ask a question or have, write a response about skipping Ender's Game. Absolutely. The third thing that it had is that there were alternatives for people who wanted to go and see Ender's Game. So people were discouraged from going to see it, skip it. Uh, there were events all around uh, the U.S. to basically provide other and movies. Canada. Yeah, and Canada. Uh, you know, so some people showed The Fifth Element, some people showed, I mean, like, I think... Scott they, Pilgrim. Yeah, 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 versus the world. Uh, there were, like, these alternate parties and events and things like that, so there was, like, a clear alternative. On our show, even, we recommended other movies that you could go and see instead of seeing Ender's Game uh, to kind of, you know, give you alternatives, because you need that to know what you can be supporting instead. Uh, Geeks Out also visibly, visibly promoted uh, Orson Scott Card's violation on LGBT rights, we used his words as the backbone for the boycott. Right. If you looked at it, there was a lot of uh, visible violations as far as, you know, what going to see the movie was going to do. So, you know, there were uh, there were memes going out about it. There were constant press releases. Uh, there were a lot of discussions via social media about should you go see the movie, should you not. There was uh, there were op-eds in newspapers, mm -hmm. lots of interviews. And so there was a huge kind of concentrated effort that let people know, hey, if you're going to be violating our community by going to see this movie, these are what that's what that looks like and the consequence behind it. And the fifth and final pillar of a successful boycott is an organized effort, which Geeks Out did flawlessly. Totally. They had a graphic designer behind it early on into it. They gave kind of a very recognizable icon uh, for skipping the game. Uh, they were always out in front of any news item mm -hmm. at conventions, uh, giving interviews. There was like video coverage. Uh, there was there was a, a large social media aspect to it, like a lot of uh, posts on the Geeks Out blog. There was all, they were always out in front of the issue and always making a statement about it. There was strong leadership that communicated a very specific timeline and goals, and that was easy for people to rally behind. We had MoveOn.org uh, join us That's and right. actually promoted the Skip Ender's Game petition, and, and that reached thousands, if not more, people to sign up to Skip Ender's Game. Um, so it. Actually, I, I you know I have to tip my hat to to the Geeks Out guys in New York for doing this. They they really allowed people to get behind them and allowed them to have the freedom to create their own Skip Ender's Game event. It was fantastic leadership. Yeah, and you know, I, to some degree, you could actually say that it was a successful boycott. I mean, first off, the film didn't do phenomenally well. I think it did okay for the opening weekend, but after well, it, ha it got the same amount as um, After Earth did, which was that M Night Shyamalan terrible movie with Will Smith and his kid, which oh, was uh, which was. Bombed, it tanked. <laughs> so we're talking about it was a lateral move about uh, what they made in the box office, and, those two movies. And so. by the second weekend, it was basically like not anywhere. And the know. third weekend, I think Bad Grandpa beat it out. So <laughs> way to go, Johnny Knoxville. Yeah, like, that's awesome. Um, you know, also, Orson Scott Card was nowhere to be seen yes. uh, during the actual promotion of the film. Considering that's his masterpiece, you know that had to be killing him. During that time, he also quietly snuck away from his leadership at the National Organization of Marriage, the anti-gay organization that he was working with until the time the boycott began. And so, you know, it, it seems like, yeah, it actually took kind of a hit and really lowered his profile. I'm not sure if those were the actual goals of the Skip Enders game, but it, it had a major effect on the man, his brand... Uh, and his writing, so that's fantastic. That being said, DR, not everyone is a fan of boycotts, because there are some definite downsides to boycotts. 
Uh, one of the largest downsides is that they would assume that anytime you target an organization that's considered to be anti-gay or with anti-gay practices, that you're inevitably going to hurt whatever queers end up working for that organization as well. I mean, you're going to put them out of jobs, you're going to possibly get them laid off, you know, uh, and... That's not my responsibility if they decide to work for an anti-gay company. I'm just saying that not everyone has the availability to choose in their community what companies are not, are not anti-gay. Listen up, queers. Any of you want to uh, quit your job at Chick-fil-A, you can sleep on my couch. You might end up with a lot of queers on your couch in the next week. I hope they're cute. <laughs> um, the second downside of boycotts is people uh, say that instead of targeting some sort of organization, institution, company that has anti-gay practices, you should really be targeting the laws, the government, and uh, the, the, basically the social structure that helps make those companies and those anti-gay practices possible. You know, instead of uh, you know, getting mad at Target for uh, you know, funding an LGBT, uh, an anti-LGBT candidate, why don't you instead uh, basically shame the candidate himself mm. and really go after that? Or why are you going against a company that's not that's not going to change the, the politician's practices? I feel like the boycott needs to have an, an, an added uh, element to it, which is reaching out and trying to start the communication with that organization. Like, I'm not sure if Geeks Out ever sent Orson Scott Card a... Uh, a, a a letter saying, hey, come talk to us. They may have. I don't know. You know unverified. Yeah, unverified. But you're absolutely right. Is that like boycott should really be one of a kind of part of a tool belt of mm -hmm. things that you do to help mobilize against a company with anti-gay practices. Absolutely. Reach out to the company and, you know, say, hey, this is what you're doing. This is how it hurts people. Do you have a response to any of this? Because you know, maybe they do. Maybe they're unaware of what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, you know, second thing, um, you know, uh, start a conversation amongst your family and friends and get them mobilized on the issue. You know, uh, letters to the editor, things like that. Memes, conversations on social media. Um, you know, and and you can really start to create a lot of sort of uh, buzz around this. Uh, you know, maybe starting actual protests. Uh, you know, at the place of business, things like that. Like there are ways that you can raise awareness that aren't just stopping buying a company's product. So, so what's the solution, uh, Dr. Like, uh, you know, considering that boycotts tend to be wholly negative and tend to be about you know really shaming a company, what 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 do you think is really the better alternative? Well, I I feel like there needs to be a, a, a movement, uh, an, an anti-protest that starts to highlight and celebrate companies that do support LGBT rights and, and have for years. Like, instead of having boycotts, we could have boy cans. Boy cans? Bo 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 boy cans! Boycott? Fuck that. Boy can. Boy can. Boy can. Hell yeah. Bo 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 boy can. Looking for an app to tell you what to buy and where to shop? Well, then we have an app for you. Boy Can. Get a load of that can. Now you can figure queer-friendly businesses with a simple swipe. It's easy, like you. Boy Can. Boy Can. Boy Can. Boy Can. Boy Can. Now available at select CVS pharmacies. We can Boy Can Absolute for their over 30 years of support of... of... of being gay and trans and queer and drag queens and RuPaul. Right now, I feel like the conversation with boycotts comes to a standstill with the boycott. That conversation needs to continue or it needs to evolve into highlighting those companies, really uh, having a counter boycott. Because it's it's one thing to stop our money somewhere, but we need to remember that we do have buying power. Right. Instead of highlighting where to stop that pink dollar, we need to start highlighting where it goes. For every boycott where we boycott Stoli, we need to uh, continue the conversation with buy absolute. Mm. You know, we need to find a, a pasta company that that supports LGBT uh, employees and, and patrons and start giving money to them. Maybe instead of boycotting the Sochi Olympics, you actually highlight the gay games or you highlight any other sorts yes. of events that like that's, really are progressive, you know, and are doing that. That's a great idea. And like with movies, every you know, when we boycott uh, Ender's Game, I feel like we need to find a, a, a gay writer whose movie is hopefully coming out around that same time. Like there needs to be more research done. It, it can't, the conversation can't stop with, I'm not giving you my money. I'm going to get my money somewhere else. And what's crazy is that using this carrot instead of stick approach, that is by praising companies that already have these practices, you could actually encourage companies that don't to start doing that because yes. they want the same good press as well. So it could continue to change minds and really affect policies that affect us all. After this Brilla thing, you, you mentioned companies that had not said anything bad about gays. You're like, oh, that's really good. And I was like, no, they, I don't want people to not say anything. I want companies to say positive things about me 
and my community. Right. So it, it needs to not just be like, oh, we're staying silent on the gay issue. Right. No, you need to be vocal about the gay issue and you need to support the gay issue with whatever you can, with donating to LGBT groups in your community, to having successful policies and programs to support your gay employees. Mm -hmm. right? You need to be doing that as a company right now. All of you, all of you companies. Yeah, absolutely. And, and doing that, I think, would actually end up winning you a lot more queer customers instead of reacting after you do make some sort of gay gaffe. But only if we, the people, start to do that. You know, yeah, we, we have to, to start giving the money to them so they see that benefit. There's that There's that relationship there. And right now, boycotts have a... Boycotts are all about ending relationships mm -hmm. between a, a group of people and the company. Uh, we need to start strengthening that with our money and with the company giving back to us. There needs to be that, um, that give and take, that tit for tat. Totally. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of Joystick. Make sure to check out our Facebook page and like it. And if you're not already a subscriber of our YouTube show, please subscribe. Click that button. Yeah. And, and now, now here's a little joy for your stick. stick.